After many requests from you guys to do a video on the Tacova's press kit, I finally have them here today. So we are going to do an extended test to see what this Tacova's boot is all about. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you so much for joining me today for this Tacova's press kit review. This has been the most requested boot that I do a video on over the past year since it was released, and I'm so excited to finally have them in hand for an extended test review. So we're gonna go over the rundown, break down the qualities and the details of this boot, then we're gonna put it to work, and then finally at the end, you will have my final thoughts about how this boot is built and if you should get a pair yourself. But before we get into any of that, we have a sponsor today. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine membership that sends you six bottles of wine with wine education information and cards about each one to help you learn. They use a seven question quiz to help you find your taste preferences and delivers you the wine based on the results. And they got it right for me too because I got a Gewürztraminer, or you can shorten it to Gewürz if you want to. I'm pretty familiar with this style of wine. This one's grown in California. I also got a California Cab Sav, which is not how you pronounce it. It makes the wine snobs cringe when you say Cab Sav, so I always like to do that. And I even got my favorite type of wine, the Syrah. I fell in love with Syrah when I lived in Arizona and it inspired me to even write a song about it. So I'm a huge fan of Syrah. I'm so excited about this one. I'm gonna crack this open right now. Let's go. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a good Syrah. So if you're looking to get into wine or maybe get a cool gift for a loved one, definitely check out Bright Cellars and you can get 50% off your first six bottle order when you use my link. Cheers guys. All right, now that we got the juices flowing, you know what comes next for this Tacova's press kit. It's the rundown. This is the Tacova's press kit. It also might be pronounced Prescott, but you'll have to take that up with the Arizona town. Press kit, Prescott, either way, it's good. This is the Bison model, and it's the hickory color. I love Bison. Very similar to Bullhide, super tough, super durable, and I'm so happy that Tacovas is using it on this press kit. It also features a Uto with a double stitched welt, and you can see that the stitches that they're using on this double stitched welt is the same color as the welt. Usually when we see double stitched welts, they're using white stitching, and I love the fact that Tacovas is doing a matching to the welt here. It's not seen very often, but it eventually will become matched because it gets dirty anyway. So they're already ahead of the game here. Love it. It's coming in just under 14 inches tall using bovine leather for the shaft. And you also have pull holes up here as well. Down here, you got a two inch stacked leather heel with a spur shelf. For an outsole, we got a butyl treated leather outsole. That treatment will make this a little bit more tough and be able to withstand a little bit more. The Boulay boots that I first had, they had a butyl leather outsole and they lasted not very much longer, like maybe a month or so, but it's definitely a nice feature to have on this Tacoba's boot. You also got lemon wood pegs alongside that shank. They're really traditional, you gotta love to see it. On the inside, you got that hung leather lining, so they got a little bit extra of a leather lining to cover up that seam along the inside that might rub against your leg otherwise. So it should be pretty comfortable. And you also have a removable polyurethane insole. I tried this insole out recently in the Bandera boot and it was pretty okay. It wasn't bad. This one looks a little bit different, a little bit different of a leather on top there. And underneath that removable polyurethane insole is a what feels to be a traditional hard leather insole, which is very much different from the Bandera, another boot in their ranch wear line. A couple of other quick notes here is that this boot is an 11D and it looks enormous for an 11D. Just look at it next to this Hondo 
2670, which is an 11 and a half D. It's crazy. It's so much bigger. Part of the reason why it's so much bigger is because you need to have an insole in here. The Hondo doesn't need an insole. It's traditionally made uh, through and through. So, and it's meant for the same type of work that this Presca is marketing itself as. So it's huge compared to other boots the same size, but it's also much, much heavier. It comes in at around two pounds and five ounces, which is even heavier than a pair of Steel Toe Ariat Work Hogs that I have. The Steel Toe Ariat Work Hogs come in at two pounds and two ounces, and the Hondos that you just saw, that 2670, those come in at one pound, 12 ounces. So this press kit is a really heavy boot. It's heavier than some steel toes and it doesn't have a steel toe at all, which is kind of concerning. I'm, I'm really worried about that during the extended test, but we'll have to see how it goes. This Tacova's press kit is also made in Mexico and it's coming in at $275 at tacovas.com, although they do have other models that are cheaper. The regular bovine one, I believe, is a little cheaper than this bison one, and they also have a shark model, which comes in just under $300. Now it's time to try this boot on and see how it looks and feels. Good fit, good fit. All right, I got on the Tacovas press kit right now and uh, it fits a little bit big. So the Bandera, I had a 10 and a half D and that worked well with thin socks for me. And this is an 11 D and I'm wearing thick socks. Some of my thickest that I have, the Thorlos 12 hour work shift sock, which is my favorite. And I like the fit with it, but compared to some of my other 11D boots, these do feel just a little bit bigger. That insole feels very similar to the way that it felt in the Bandera, where it kind of feels like they added it in as an afterthought. You know when you get new boots and they're a little bit big, you can't return them, you know, you're SOL. So you decide to put in a insole yourself, like one of those Ariat ones that you can order from online. You put it in there and it fills out the boot to where it fits, but it just doesn't feel like it should. Like that's how the Tacovas feels. This is a very interesting feeling with it being a new boot. It's like they just made the boot big and then added it in after the fact to make it an 11D size. So it kind of pushes your foot up in a weird way that I don't feel in a lot of other cowboy boots. That bison though is very supple, which is what I like to feel from a bullhide or a bison. It's a really thick and durable leather and some manufacturers can make it so that it's really stiff and uncomfortable to begin with. But uh, brands like Hondo and this one here with the Tacovas Bison, I'm loving what they did with the leather here. It feels great. Here's the POV and uh, <laughs> they look big. <laughs> They're much bigger than any other 11D boot that I have. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of awkward to look down and be like, wow, my feet aren't that big, but these boots are that big and they do feel heavier than a lot of my other boots. But how will it feel after an extended test? That's next, so let's get into that. It was a horrible day of cold and rain when I went to Big Tree Farm to help out Piper Wadsworth with chores. Leather boots will rot so fast if they're used regularly in these conditions. Rubber boots are much better like what Piper had, but you become familiar with a pair of boots real quick in these situations. First things first, it was time to muck out the stalls. I step out in the morning on an uneasy day. 
The world is split and unsure, so I'm sure to step in the strongest way. With every footfall, I remember who I am. Each and every memory help strengthen how I stand. We are cracked, but we shine. There ain't a belief or dead end that can keep us confined. When they need it. Finally, time for breakfast. And apparently Piper's horses were really interested by the camera. But hunger made them lose interest very quickly. And they just came in by themselves. Order up. I come home in the evening after a hard working day I'm proud of what I've done even if it's just for a little pay I kick off my boots before we do it all again While the horses finished up breakfast I moved some hay bales Now it's time to go back out. I love being around these beautiful animals. Especially in such a beautiful country. Before leaving, I had to check out one more thing. The farm is on the same property as the National Warplane Museum in Geneseo, New York. And there are some really cool permanently installed planes outside the hangars I needed to get a closer look at. Even though it was such nasty weather, I enjoyed visiting Big Tree Farms and the National Warplane Museum in these Tacova Prescott boots. Huge thanks to Piper Wadsworth for letting me help out with morning chores. Hopefully I can make it back that way for the annual air show at the National Warplane Museum. It's happening on July 4th and 5th in Geneseo, New York. And if you guys are interested, links are in the description. Trust me, it's awesome. All right, now on to my final thoughts for the Tacovas Prescott. I want to start off by saying that the leather that they used is beautiful. The bison, so soft. The bovine leather, the cowhide on the outside and as a lining, very, very soft, super supple, feels luxurious. The biggest downside to this boot is that it is so heavy. It is way too heavy to be a practical working boot that's not a steel toe, especially for a boot that's all leather. And it's very tiring to wear this boot dry, but then when it got wet and muddy, it's downright obnoxious. Why is it so heavy? It seems like Tacova's made this boot a size larger and wider than what it had to be so that they could fit an insole in here. And even if you look on the Tacova's website with the Cartwright, that goes up to size 15. And if you look at the press kit online, it only goes up to size 14. And that makes me think that they're using a size higher last to build the boot around and then just sticking an insole in there to make it feel like the size lower, which is not how you do it for the best fit. I mean, there's companies out there that have been doing this for years and they can make a boot with an insole and not have it look like a size bigger. I'm thinking about Area and Chisos mostly. On top of that, the hung lining makes this a little bit heavier as well. Don't get me wrong, the hung lining feels really nice in shorter boots, 
because your ankle isn't gonna rub against that side seam in there, but it does create a little bit more weight to the boot. And when you add on, you know, three to four more inches, that's a lot of extra leather in here for a hung lining and that adds a lot of weight. On top of all that, the fit feels like an afterthought. Like I said, companies have figured out how to build their boots so that their insoles fit in there naturally and comfortably, and they figured out how to make a lightweight leather lining on the inside, especially when it comes to tall tops. It's like Tacova's ignored everything that came before them just so that they could make this boot. And it shows, like it's, it lacks in so many areas, except for the leather quality. I've even tried 16 inch tall tops from companies like Boulay and Hondo that don't weigh as much as this one does. So that's an extra two and a half inches tall. There is no reason why an all leather boot should weigh more than a steel toe even. So if you really wanted a tall top, which is like 14 inches or taller, I would say that you should consider Hondo, Boulay, Olathe, they make much lighter weight tall top boots that are way more practical and they've been doing it for decades. That said, I think these boots would be good for folks who wanna make their feet look bigger or if you are an athlete and you're looking for something heavy to train in because I could see this being a great training boot. Any other boot that I have after wearing this one feels incredibly light. And that's all I got this time. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know what you think of all this down in the comments. Please subscribe while you're here and I will see you guys around. Peace. Rescue weighs a ton. It's not practical, not fun. The leather's nicely done, but this boot's still not the one. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today. Why don't you check out this video by the Hondo 3416 which is a very similar looking boot that I put on under very similar tests or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time yes indeed peace have a good one